Hello, everyone, and welcome to Summer Nevada Plays Until Dawn, Episode 7. We're right where we left off with who is, how are you, oh, never mind. Uh, resume. Previously on Until Dawn. I'm going to turn the volume up just a little bit for me so I can hear it. Our one-way ticket to the spirit realm. Stop I messaging me on Facebook. Spooking for one night, okay? I see a hot bath in my crystal ball. So have fun. Oh, you do this! <laughs> probably my father should probably get off Facebook, but then I I would oh have to God. get back on afterwards, and oh you know that's a pain. Like closing a window Shh. is so much work. And then opening it back up is like that much work compounded upon itself, double. I'm not, you know, it's the day after Labor Day. That doesn't mean I have to super overexert myself right now. But we're on uh, Chapter 5 Dread, six hours until dawn. Mike followed the stranger person over to uh, this area, which uh, you'll, is the sanatorium. That's right. Okay, I don't know what you just did there. But it, you know, that points us to, to, to like, that's how you enter the building. Damn it. All right. Let's get a closer look. <clears throat> I gotta say, not to be that guy, but there are some lack of snow particle effects that I would like to be seeing that I'm not seeing. Just, just like, like you're seeing it now, like obviously, you know, those are the given, like, you know, I'm walking on the snow, it's leaving footprints. But like during the stuff when he was like climbing over the wall and leaving no, like there was no dis, disheveling of particles, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but a, I don't care that much. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah, this game is very graphically good. I don't know what I was expecting. That entire tangent just didn't have to happen, so how about you just disregard it? That's fine. We got a totem over here. Let's pick it up. What does it entail? What does it show? Okay, I don't... I, I have not seen that. I haven't seen what that does. Obviously, you hear some kind of noise that is bad, and then Matt's just kind of, like, standing there. I haven't seen what that means, or what area that is to say, but it's probably not good. I mean, it says fortune totem. Maybe that was, like, I closed the door behind myself at some point so Matt was able to escape. Because, like, that would be one of those options where you make sure you barricade the door at any chance you get just to keep him out. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, here's the thing. The first time, you can just, like, it showed that place, which is like a secret entrance into the building. You can totally just use the front door if you want. And that's what I did the first time, like, because I just forgot about that other entrance. But yeah, that's condemned. But no, you're supposed to come down here and enter the secret way. Which, uh... It doesn't change much other than if you don't enter this way, I think you you miss a totem for sure, I'm pretty sure. And then I think you might miss something else, but I don't know what it would be. We'll just have to see. Um.
Okay. So here we are. I do not have much experience with this area in that I have not seen it except briefly while watching somebody else play this game. But I know there's a totem. I know there's a totem. I don't know where it is. I know I gotta get up there. I know how to get up there. But I gotta find me a totem first. Totem's very important. I want all the achievements. This is the playthrough I wanna get the most achievements possible for saving the most people possible. Cause that way I don't have to try in subsequent playthroughs to like, you know, I need to achieve what I have come to accomplish. I don't wanna have to redo nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Here's a totem, by the way. It's an owl totem with like an upside down asshole. Let's take a look at it. That is a lost totem, which means it's not Mike. I don't know who that would be then. I have not seen that death. I don't want to see that death. At least not in this playthrough. That'd be cool to see it in like another one where like I'm trying to kill everybody. But I definitely don't want to see that here. It might have been Matt. It could have been Chris, although I don't think it was Chris. Might have been Josh, who knows? Oh wait, Josh is dead, that's right, I forgot. Must maintain a non-spoilerific playthrough theme. I'm experiencing this for the first time just like you guys, except with like a thin veil of having experienced it not for the first time. Oh, that's different. He's so dirty, he just needs a shower, that's all. I like a change of clothes as well. That would uh, that would help him out probably immensely. Okay, but yeah, this is where you end up if you just went through the front door. So we're going to need a security pass, which we will find. I think very briefly, when I looked through that hole, I saw a glint back here. Of something to either be examined or picked up. I believe, perhaps. Perhaps? Perhaps there's something back here? Just perhaps there's like a little glint or something. You know, perhaps there's something. Oh, would you look at that? Okay. Administration notes. Let's see. Clue three. So this is 1952, which is a brief history of some kind of alluding to some kind of tragedy in the mountain. So uh, administration notes, a note asking staff to prepare beds for miners who were rescued after an incident at the mine. The miners were brought to the sanatorium to recover. Re-rescue of miners. Be advised that the minor rescue is due to be completed tomorrow, 5th of January. As the number of surviving miners is unknown, prepare all beds in Ward A. The press shall be in attendance tomorrow. We must be seen to be giving the miners the best possible care. Note that press visitors are not to be allowed into the psychiatric ward. Failure in this regard would reflect badly upon Mr. Bragg and the sanatorium as a whole and shall result in on-the-spot dismissal. Very strict punishment if you are able to let the... Uh, press see what was going on there. I can just leave, can I? Yeah, I could just go back outside if I wanted to. But uh, there's no point in that, so... Ooh, I'm, I'm making it look like I came through the front door. Okay. 
So this is the yeah, so this is the part of the game where you're really going to start to find a bunch of clues and just find out stuff about that scenario with the miners in the 1952 which is going to play heavily into the rest of the lore of the game and like why some of this stuff is happening. Oh. Someone really wanted to take a peek inside. They did. Oh yeah, put it down. All right. And then what do we have here? Clocking in cards. Let's take a look at those. Clocking in cards. These clues are going to be out of order. We'll find them all, though. Well, probably, maybe not all of them, but still, you know. A batch of 30 clocking in cards from the mine locked away in a safe. This means there were 30 miners trapped in the mine. That's going to be important, because there is going to be some discrepancy in terms of just how many of those miners actually came out of the mine afterwards. All right, so we're on the scavenger hunt. You know, just find clues. Look at the environment for detective-based things to pick up, like such as this. We have ourselves a camera. With a broken lens, if we take a look at that. The lens of this camera is smashed. It looks like someone did this on purpose. That's going to tie into another note that I am going to find back here, I believe. I have not found all this stuff, which is why I'm going to be looking extra carefully this playthrough. So let's go this way. All right, what do we have? I think this is... Yep, this is the thing that uh, relates to that. Old newspaper. A newspaper dated 1952 with a story about a reporter being banned from visiting a group of rescued miners. The reporter had his camera confiscated, so that's that camera. The Alberta Post, 9th, 6th of January... 9th, 6th. 9th of January, 1952. Reporter assaulted on Blackwood Mountain. Blackwood Pines, A.B. A reporter from the Alberta Bugle was assaulted and hospitalized yesterday by security personnel at the Blackwood Sanatorium. Chuck Bernstein, a senior news reporter, was seeking an interview with the miners dramatically rescued on Tuesday. The men had been trapped in the ground for over three weeks after a structural collapse at the Northwest Mine in December and are now being treated at Blackwood Sanatorium for malnutrition and trauma. Jefferson Bragg, sole proprietor of both the Northwest Mining Company and the Blackwood Sanatorium, told the Bugle yesterday that the incident was unfortunate and that a full internal inquiry had been launched. He also claimed that Bernstein had been trespassing on sanatorium grounds without permission. It is believed that the assault arose from an argument about Bernstein's camera, which was confiscated immediately prior to the attack. That is all for the news today. I'm some person at the news. I am signing off. Goodbye. We all talk like this in 1952 for some reason. We have all appropriated this accent. Everybody in the news. People respond to this voice. It is loud, to the point, very fast. People were a lot, had a lot quicker minds back then. Now they really don't. This voice wouldn't really work out anymore. People are like, what the hell is going on? You're talking too fast. You gotta slow down. I was looking at my phone. What did you say? What do we have here? Clue found medical notes. All right, we're getting more. Oh, this is, yeah, this is updated. The, it, it, it's the camera mentioned in the newspaper article. Someone really didn't want the pictures they took getting out. It would be nice if we could somehow look at those pictures. Miners rescued from the mine were healthier than expected, although some had exhibited, exhibited, are you kidding, reintegration problems. Update, the report mentions 12 miners, but there were 30 clocking in cards retrieved from the mine. There's no indication of what happened to the other 18 miners. Medical report. Report follows read the initial state of the 12 miners after the collapse of the mine and subsequent rescue at Blackwood Pines. Admittance. On receipt of the 12 patients at the sanatorium's medical facility, we had fully expected to find emaciated shells of men, starved and confused. Thankfully, the miners appear cogent and relatively healthy. Attributed... Attri a Pronounce things right, okay? Attributed to their apparent discovery of emergency food supplies in the mine. Emergency food supplies, right, uh-huh. Inhibited respiratory function was detected in a few of the older men, as predicted, as well as symptoms of pneumonia. Psychologically, after being trapped for 23 days, the shock of reintegration has been difficult for some of the group. Though their outward health is better than expected, they do seem affected by their time in the mine. Treatment. Due to the delicate nature of some of the patients, we have closed off the A-wing of the sanatorium. Psychological evaluations will take place as soon as possible. The men with respiratory problems have undergone a bronchoscopy and are prescribed a course of streptomycin. The other are simply kept under strict 24-hour observation. Signed, Dr. Nicholas Henry Fallis Bowen. 
That is way too many dames for one person to have who is not Mexican. Miguel Sanchez, Aborito, Dupleto, Dupe, La Casca, La Boishka, Quinceañera. Other Mexican sounds. Piñata. All right. Uh, well, we've been through everything there, so now let's move on. I do think that the lore is very interesting, and that is why I am taking the time to broadcast it, shed light on it, for those who are like-minded enough to also share in its visage. So let's uh, keep on keeping on. All right, we got ourselves a machete. hell is was it in some kind of gore disgusting thank god for those gene loopholes man okay mildly tough call for where to go i'm gonna go this way i think i didn't go this way last time i think i might have missed oh yes this is indeed a place that needs to be inspected by me. Alright, but not over here. Oh god, what's behind this curtain? Nothing at all, alright. I mean, not nothing, but... Okay, clue found restraining chair. Let's take a look at this. A chair with leather straps to restrain the patient. There's blood on it. It looks like it was used as part of a weird experiment. Oh, can I not go in? Yeah, I was going to say, like, just let me in. Is there something else here? Can I sit in it? Fuckers like to watch, I guess. Mm, damn. Sexual depravity. Torture porn, man. That's a big problem up in the mountains. What, you never seen the hills have eyes? I have. I blocked most of it out of my mind, but I have seen it. That's because it was. That's because it was like nine years ago. Like I was thirteen or something. Uh, this How many days will they keep us here? Uh, who? The hell? Where? Why? When? Interesting. Looks like the miners were not pleased with their stay at this facility. Yeah, let's not go that way. I want to make sure we find everything there is to find. Okay. Reply immediately. Reporters and other snoopers to be kept away at all costs. Telegram about miners. Let's take a look at this. Oh, one other thing was updated. Okay, I, I'm going to look at it. A telegram warning about press interest in survivors brought to the sanatorium. The mine owners were trying to cover something up. Western province, something, something. To Mr. J. Bragg, who was like the director or whatever. Incident update. Twelve survivors received at sanatorium. Showing signs of mental trauma may need to contain local press now have sent the blood becoming a problem. Please advise further. So, 12 survivors, but 30 of them went into the mine, which means 18 people did not survive. A map showing structural faults in the mine marked up. Yeah, we saw that. According to the telegram, the owners were trying to cover the fact that there were dangers up. Because that would be a big shitstorm of stuff. Press snooping around this paradise. I mean, it looks all decrepit now, but I'm sure back in 1952, this place was spiffy. All right. Good camera angle capturing this skull. I'll take a look. There's no reason for it to be there other than to just be an asshole, I guess. All right, let's go. Keep it up. You know, this is a learning episode more than the action-packed one that was last time, so we're balancing it out here. Let's go in this room. I think this is just where we discover we, it's another way for us to view the chair. 
yeah so like if you if you didn't open the curtains like you would then see that chair and be like oh i missed something i gotta go back and find out how to get there because otherwise there's nothing in this room oh god i fucking hate this if it looks like a trap that's because it is that's why i'm not gonna touch it i know what happens when i touch that shit i'm not touching it I want to see if it'll let me not touch it. Because I'm not touching it. Not of my own accord. That thing can fuck off. Since I'm not going to touch it, I can go ahead and tell you what happens if you do touch it. Uh, it's a trap. It's a bear trap. Like, remember, okay, let me actually, I can show you what happens very visually if we just go to our totems. Uh, danger, I think. That's not the danger. No, not the danger. Uh, loss. No, I think it would be guidance. Yeah, so that one. There it is. This is what happens if you touch that hand. Let me play it again. You get your hand caught in a bear trap. And then you have options to use your machete to cut off your own fingers. Or use the machete to try to, like, pry open the bear trap. I don't know what... It gives you, like, three options. If you don't choose to cut your finger off immediately, which, why would that be the first, your default thing? Like, I, I feel like losing appendages right now. Just, you know, they give you, like, three other options. Because, like, trying to pry open the bear trap doesn't work the first two times. But then they also show, like, a visual perception of a different angle of, like, a thing that's, like, creeping up on you while you're stuck in that position. So it really, like, amps up the tension of, like, okay, I probably don't have much time right now. Like, I need to make a decision. So that's what would make you, like, cut your fingers off. But because I'm not going to touch that, and, like, your machete breaks if you try to open the bear trap. But even if it breaks, you can still cut your fingers off. But then you have a broken machete. You have not a usable machete. So I want to see what happens if I do not touch the hand. Because it's set there as a trap. I wonder if by doing that, something else will spring that trap. I think that would be a neat little thing. I don't know if other people playing this game have chosen not to fiddle with that trap at all. Alright, Clue 11, name tag. A mortuary tag. The name on it reads Nicholas Bowen. That's the dude. Wait, isn't it? Something, I thought some guy's name was Bowen that was like a reporter. Uh, description. Attacked by inmate, fatal lacerations to throat, name Nicholas Bowen, tag date. Like, let me go, let me, which one of these? Some, one of these was Bowen, I don't, I don't, no, I think, I do, I don't, I don't care. Let's not, let's not even, somebody died, attacked by inmate, lacerations to throat and stuff. So, let's just leave that alone. That's what happened. We've seen it. We know it to be true. Well, we don't, but might as well. Okay. Clue found death certificate. Take a look at this. A hastily written death certificate dated 24th, February 1952. It describes the body as partially eaten. Name of deceased, Sarah Smith, date of death, February 24th, 1952, as aforementioned. I hereby certify that I attended deceased from March 8th to February 24th and last saw her alive on 24th. So you, for like 11 months, you attended her. Cause of death, severe lacerations to the abdomen, intra-abdominal intra injuries, subsequent blood loss. If death was due to external causes, violence, fill in also the following. Accident, suicide, or homicide. Homicide. Manner of injury, laceration by sharp implement, possibly fingernails. Additional notes, please use the box provided overly for any additional relevant information. Signed by N. Bowen. N Nicholas Bowen. M.D. So you're the- Nicholas Bowen's the doctor, and then he was killed in the other place. Okay. On reverse, additional notes, body was not discovered until six to eight hours after death. Sections of the intestine and kidneys were apparently eaten by the attacker. So that's comforting. And the doctor later died. Uh, something very bad happened here pretty much all the way around the facility and stuff. And, you know, we'll, we'll get bigger inklings as to what that might have been as we go uh, further into the story. Eh, gross.
That's even sicker. Alright, but we have, do have ourselves the chapel key card now. It has lots of holes in it, so I'm confused as to how it can still work, but maybe it recogni it's recognized by the holes. I wouldn't know. Okay. But if you... We've seen wolves in this area. If you recall the totem, we can be friends with the wolves. There is a wolf. There is a, a exchange with the wolf. The totem's right here. Where's it at? Fortune. I believe it's this... Nope, that's not the one. I believe it's this one. That is also not the one. I believe that it is not that one. I believe that it is not that one. I believe that it is this one. There is the fortune... Or the guidance that we are petting a wolf and we are not dying by the wolf. So maybe... If we see a wolf, let's not be overly aggressive towards it, because we could possibly make friends with it. So let's keep that in mind. That's why the totem, that's why it's a guidance totem. Let's you help make the right decisions. Not be too jumpy in terms of killing animals, especially since you're not supposed to kill any animals. That includes wolves that are maybe vicious, but still, they're animals. Nature. You don't kill nature. That could be very consequential. Okay, so, let us go up the stairs. There's a relatively long expanse of nothing really happening. Holy shit. Yep, there's a wolf. I didn't, I didn't remember that that happened, so... Whatever. You can laugh. You can laugh all you want. I'm glad for no quick time events, though. Okay, we have a butterfly effect. I want to... Oh. Butterfly effect update. What? Let's take a look. I think maybe if you want to be sneaky about looking at someone, don't hold up a lantern right next to your goddamn face. You think maybe you could you could pull that out? Ain't this a quaint little psycho crib indeed? All right, let me take a look at this butterfly effect. At what price? Mike got to the morgue. Mike still had a usable machete. Aha! Mike did not have to cut his fingers off because Mike wasn't stupid. And it's It was so obviously a trap, but like you still have to see what happens, you know? If you touch it. that's I think every single... Per I don't think anybody... Seeing that for the first time, di just ignored it. I think everybody went up to it and pressed X. Which is why you got to have some of this experience under your belt if you want to see some certain things. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, we're going to continue down the stairs. So that was clearly not the wolf which we can become friends with. Back in here. Yes, back in here. Very observant of you. Making it known to the player that we are indeed... I can remember settings, alright? I don't need your help spouting your exposition at me. Oh, does this, does this go here? Or does it go there? Uh, does it go there? How does this work again? I don't understand. Okay. Ah, wolf. Do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. It's okay. It's okay. It's a wolf. It's okay. Well, I'm just a stranger. It's good. It's smart of him to be aggressive towards, you know, just to be on the safe side. But as you can see, I pose no threat. So let me just walk up to you. Hey, it's all, it's all right. Let's approach. Come on. We're... We're all friends here. I am an alpha male. You are an alpha dog. Let us be cohesive in our bond. We are both strong. Alright, cool. 
new butterfly effect. Man's best friend. Mike did not kick the wolf. Mike made a friend. Oh, would you look at that? Even if you do kick the wolf, I'm, I, I'm mildly confused if, like, if you have the workable machete, if it makes you kill the wolf with the machete. I don't want that. But it, you can kick the wolf, and basically the same thing happens, except it doesn't become friends with you. But if you go get a body, like a bone from this chest and bring it back to the wolf, then you can mend that tattered relationship. Uh, which is something I'm going to do anyway, just because it's a good thing to do, you know? Let's maximize our relationship with the wolf. All right, Mystery Man, clue found, cigar box. Oh, we got a couple updated clues. Let me... Oh, yeah, this one just updated. The label is the same as the cigar box found in the sanatorium, so that guy here was also in the mine with that recent cigar box. Wooden cigar box, only a single cigar is left. It has a distinctive brand label. And then right here... Clue 32, a stubbed out cigar, but it's the same as a cigar. So that guy's been pretty much everywhere around this area. So it pays to keep that in mind. It will, yeah. Oh yeah, they're gonna get fat off chewing on a bone in which they're not actually consuming anything. It's just for the taste. But okay. Nah, they might eat it. They're wolves. They're big. They got sharp teeth. They'll probably eat the bones. Wolf, come. I have a treat. A, a treat. A present. A present treat for you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Easy, boy. Easy. Easy, boy. Not medium or hard. Easy. That's the difficulty I like my wolves to be, you understand? Okay, now let's go over here. Important, important things so, to get here. Alright, we have ourselves a jacket that belongs to the person we've been following, that we are totally just gonna put on, and he's not gonna miss that. So that's cool. Oh, very nice, nice. thinking there. We have ourselves a pistol. Nice little pistol. All right. That gun is very necessary in order to progress, so it's not like you could even, like, go without getting it. You need it to shoot the lock. And this maybe you don't get the pistol, and then when you have a workable machete, you use the machete to bash the locks. I don't know, man. I've never had a workable machete up to this point before, so... I guess we'll see what I can then do with it. But first things first, is there anything over here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's go. Uh, this segment is almost over, so we'll end the episode afterwards. Before it switches to another character. I think Matt and Emily is uh, next. Alright. Oh, he feels so badass after that. I shot a lock off. I I would too, I guess. Okay, we could go to the left. We could. Or we could not go to the left and come over here. Is there anything over here? No, there is not. That is unfortunate. Nothing. Okay, just making sure. I don't want to miss nothing. Okay, but don't go straight down the stairs yet, I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Camera angles screw me up right now. Let's go. There we go. Totem. Yes, we have a nice fat face totem. Moose antlers. What do we got? All right, that is a death. That is the potential death of Mike.
That looks like that happens in the lodge. And he blows himself up by flicking a lighter. You may wonder what circumstances may lead to such an event, and how such a thing could be possible. I'm sure you'll discover as we go. Although you probably won't, because the deal is to not, you know, self-suicide. As if there's any other kind of suicide. Clue found minor rescue photo. A framed photo of the group of miners rescued after a cave-in dated 1952. 1952. The plague says that all 12 miners survived, but there were 30 clocking cowards from the mine. So nobody's, you know, talking about those 18. And yeah, yeah, update, update. The photograph only showed 12 survivors. That's right. So we, we got about half uh, 1952 clues now. Okay. Nothing else over here. All right, then let's go down and down the stairs. I like the way the shadow looks, just dancing on the walls. Okay, anything over here? I feel like when your priority is, like, searching the perimeter of every room you're in, kind of breaks the tension and suspension, because it makes you remember, you know, because you're playing it like it's a game, so it kind of loses its immersion. But still, you know, I, I don't know what you would do about that. So that's just something that is going to happen, I guess. All right, that way's the way to go. There is nothing else over here. So let's uh, end this segment with Mike, then. Of course. Locked. Okay. Uh, oh, how bad. Oh, he doesn't notice that, though. Oh, he knows this is now. Damn. Oh, now look at this. Looks like the Psycho's got control of all the electric stuff and can also see what's happening. So, if we, yeah, like, he just locked this. Hey, it's locked. The hell who did that? Then there's some seriously uncool shit going on up here tonight. I would agree. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Matt and Emily is next.